Right, today I'm going to do a watercolour of a scene I saw at um, Beth Chateau's garden in Essex. Absolutely amazing uh, garden. If you're uh, into gardening, you could do worse than pay a visit to this uh, amazing uh, garden. It's famous actually for its the way it was uh, planted in design uh, with emphasis on plants that can tolerate uh, extreme dry conditions and of course uh, Essex in the UK is one of the wet driest parts in the United Kingdom um, but having told you all that this little section of the um, of the garden that I'm showing you is um, not actually in the dry area so there's wetland areas extreme dry screed areas and woodland areas this is more in the woodland area because it's got some nice shapes um, so I'm painting in the uh, rather bright sunshine at the moment so I hope that you can uh, see this it's not glaring too much so what I'm going to do is just wet up this and put in a first wash of the um, of the greens and a bit of sky colour. But uh, I think this is going to dry very, very quickly, uh, which has its advantages, but disadvantages. So let's let's crack on with that. Um, I think I'm going to use I've got a nice Chinese brush here so I'm going to uh, put some uh, nice um, a light wash of greens I think um, the problem with a with the green green colors and landscapes it can be too green I mean it is green of course that's the reality um, and uh, it might work in a photograph perhaps um, or yes or I, th I think you've just got to balance it not get it too green because it could be very very um, boring and I've heard a few professional artists say that too much green their paintings never sell uh, or f in f are not so popular I should say uh, but it's very difficult to get this balance right um, the greens that you're going to uh, to use um, because there's such a variety you can vary them tremendously so I've got Viridian and Sap Green and Hooker's Green. So I'm just putting a gentle wash in here initially just to get some cover so we don't have this glaring at us. So I think this is going to dry quite quickly. So... I've killed off all that white initially. So I think that's going to dry very quickly in a minute or two. Um, but I think when it's dried, actually when it's still a little bit damp, perhaps I should put in some darker greens. Because uh, this area here is um, was very dark. You will see as it takes shape what I'm trying to do, but uh, you've got to be patient with a lot of paintings, but especially watercolor. It looks quite a mess for a while, and I've got a big hedge along here. They've got these stakes in and it's they're trying out a new 
way of dealing with all their brush and all their uh, cuttings that they've done. So let it be a haven for wildlife and bugs and things they can settle in there. And this was all uh, a little, there's a little pathway here. So I've got to keep that. And in here they had a, a pond, quite a big pond, but it was all pond weed. So it had um, a few little ducks and trying to wade through the dense pond weed. But uh, I'll leave that there for the moment. And I've got to get greens in the background here. This is deep foliage. Of course, it's high summer now. It's July. So we will get a lot of foliage there. And I'll put in, uh, I've sketched in the uh, this uh, main tree here. There's lots of little ones here. But I'm going to uh, put in the darks of this big trunk here and these main beams here, the main boughs coming across and branches. But the problem, you'll have to be so careful with um, drawing trees, it's you have to paint what you see rather than what you know. You think a tree is this way and you, you've got to be careful you don't end up with lollipops. Every tree, if you look carefully at them, they've all got a distinctive uh, shape to them. So I'm going to uh, try to do that. I've marked out these main beams pretty much as they were, but Again, I've, I do put in the, uh, something that I think will make a good picture rather than what is always there. But I try to be as realistic as I can. And this will be a, in an impressionistic style. So I won't uh, be following photorealism. That's not what I do. But I'm going to uh, use a variety of little browns. I've got umber and raw sienna. This is wet on wet. You can see it's bleeding in here now. It will give me a nice diffuse colour, which is what I want. certain stages anyway um, and the far bank of that pond there so I'll just put some in there and the hedge comes back behind that tree and uh, in the distance there's a line of trees so I'm going to try and make that read as distant and the way to do that is to have a sort of bluier green so we'll go on to that in a moment um, but should I put in a few more darks in here bit of burnt umber I think um, in uh, Try and give some shapes to it. Yes, we've got a lot of bracken and smaller trees in this hedge line here. So let's try and get a few of these.
this Chinese brush has got a nice tip to it so you can just put some fine points in like that I want to try and keep perspective our vanishing point is in here so I've got to try and lead our eye into this let's get something more darker in here going to use a little bit of Payne's grey and some raw umber darken this up a little bit Yes, I think we can do that. And then we put some green in as well. Bit of um, sap green and a little bit of hookers. Let's get a little bit of a brighter green going here because it works some sunlight in this area although we're gladed you get the shafts of bright light coming through was there a little bit out there as well and let's just make that pond weed a little more Vivid, a little bit more fluorescent. And some sunlight out here. Okay, there. There's a gate there which we can put in a minute. But let's get some greens going there. It's drying out a little bit now so I can a little bit of dry brush work just with the side of my brush give some suggestion of foliage right let's take it down it's more in size so our eye is drawn into the picture but let's get a little bit darker at the base here but blue if it's too blue you can um, drop some browns into it as well Let's get some got this tree with lots of foliage coming here. Put some yellow ochre, I think, into that as well. I want to leave a few sky holes as well, so we get a bit of sky, a bit of blue showing through, which we'll deal with in a minute. Perhaps I should have put my blue in initially. We we'll we'll leave a few gaps. Right, let's see what we can do here. And I've got a nice tree line, as I said, out here. I've got to make that 
got to push that back into the distance somewhat. So I think we'll have to use some bluey, certainly light bluey greens. In fact, probably exaggerate it somewhat just for, to make a good painting. So let's... Uh, Mm, maybe I put a bit of blue in, I think. To get some of this sky. Right, let's dry off the brush. And get a little bit of bluey going a little light green light blue and I think I have to keep it fairly fairly grey and blue let's see mm. uh, not too bad but I think a little bit more blue a bit fainter It's just a, a tree line there in the distance. Keeping it fairly muted. Um, a little bit more colour there. Make it stand out. Right, let's leave it at that for the moment. Um, let's see. Oh yes, this is drying very, very quickly. So I think I'm going to get a bit of blue so I can get some of my skies in. Which is, More clouds in the distance horizon. Let's do that. Again. So here, leave a few white areas. Or our sky holes. And remember the sky gets more vivid to the higher in the sky. So I'm gonna put a little bit there suggest it area a little bit of a, a bit more green a bit more vivid I'm going to put a gate in here as well so we'll get more detail as we come to the uh, foreground um, see if I still got enough blue showing wash and cover these little white areas so I'll put this tree in in a moment right so let's get 
get on with that then. Let's see uh, if I can make some convincing colors for the tree, for the bark. So I've got a raw umber. blue make it a bit darker right let's see yes it's coming down all right and we'll have a dark side to it as well and a you know shadow side got to do that So we can do that by a lighter pad or perhaps lifting or it's still wet if I can get away with that. I just about see the remains of my my sketch. Give me some sort of guidance to where the main limbs were anyway. I'll do that. I can see that main ones come up here. Maybe out of our frame there. It'll push the brush down a little harder as you come lower, so it gets thicker like this. Some of these bows. come right across our picture into our frame and very much a, a feature of this actually was the, the way this huge tree Well, I'm back again after my uh, battery died on me. Um, so I've got to press on now and I've put some darks in the, the tree there. But what I've got to do now is put some uh, a more defined tree line along there, I think. So I better get a small brush for that. A little tiny brush and uh, get some nice green not too too dark though so uh, just on this tree line the hedge hedge row there's a nice tree there in here to show this hedge line I don't want it too dark though because I don't want to bring it too forward so let's see well that will do the trick And we've got to get some on the other side of the line as well. Trees there. Right, 
here we go, we've got something there to suggest a distant trees. Um, so I think we could let's get some slightly different green along there. Sort of a bit of a lemony green. So we can see some um, a little bit of warmth because it is a it's a lovely sunny day. As I said, if you're uh, interested in gardening, you've got to go and have a look at the Beth Chateau Gardens in Essex. Quite the prettiest garden I've been to in a long time. Well, this, of course, is just looking out on a meadow, sort of on the perimeter of it. M mainly the, the garden is behind me, but there's woodland off to my left and right here. Um, beautiful walks. But if you're a more conventional garden, the smaller gardens you'd find in an average house, you've got plenty to see as well. And I noticed all the all the gardeners, they looked very intense as they discussed with their friends and family there what plants they were going to put in and have they got room for it, things like that. So uh, they were a different kind of gardener, I think, from what I normally see in a garden centre. They looked very earnest. So I'm going to try and do this this gate now. This five barred gate. So I'll find a little brown. It will do the trick for me. Um, Trying to vary the the colours as well. Want them to stand out. More vivid colours in the in the foregrounds, really. Little signboard there. it's so hot today. It is, look at my watch here, 23 degrees. So that's pretty warm for the UK. About time. We've had a terrible weather until recently. we go, get something there. Uh, let's do more with this fence here. to keep a fairly steady hand. And then we've got uh, the 
his crossbars here. Another one there. along You can put lots of detail and make it very, very tight if you want. But I'm just doing this in a fairly loose way. Just to capture the atmosphere. Here we are. Got a mixture of different colours there, browns and greys and dark browns, burnt umber. Let's see what we can do. Need to thicken this one up a little bit. There we go. As I said, it's just a impression. But you want it to read as if it's uh, Got some real imagery there that you would see as you go on your walks. Right, there we go. Um, now, let's try to put more detail in this tree. Um, I need some darks. Also on this, these little hedge arrangement here, they've got stakes in here. And they've got it all packed out with bracken and cuttings from their gardening. In fact, they've got two. So it's like a wet, like a, a little sandwich, really. I'll put another one here. Right. Now we need to get some different greens going. Let's get a bit of hookers and sap mixed in here. Some browns. there. A little 
bit of dry brush can give me some texture. Just darker along the bottom. As you would expect, because it's not getting the light. Green into that. Get some yellow ochre as well. Again. That's it. It's coming now. As I said, you've got to be very patient with your painting sometimes. You may think I've, it's not going to work. And then just do a few lines and it suddenly starts to read. Very strange how this happens. from greens out here in this fields beyond okay right let's get a bit more uh, some greens and browns going the pathway a little dry brush there just the side of my brush and the paper is giving me some texture this is 140 pounds Langton's rough paper so you could if you do some dry brush work it reads a little better let's I think I need to Put a little more in here with my Chinese brush. Okay. I think I've got to do more detail on this this tree. These hedges here. This. dry brush there and here it needs to be much darker so it contrasts the dark here will contrast with the light there if I make this darker this will appear brighter so we've got to do something like that more with this tree to need to make that a little bit more defined I think um, oh, this was grass here grass verge here coming around see came okay, here A bit behind there. This is a Chinese calligraphy brush, actually, but they're really very handy when you want to do some light marks. Right. Right, let's 
um, put a little bit more dark in there. Maybe we should get some ochre. Let's get on and see if I can put a bit more into these uh, these bows. So I think I better get a smaller. Or a more around, a little bit more control. This is a, a graduate Dalaroni round number ten. So let's get some nice darks going. Some browns, different darks. Can put a little red in them as well. Don't want to use black itself, or well, very rarely do you do that. Um, it tends to kill your picture. So let's. Uh, if I can darken up here a little bit more. I take my pressure off the brush as I come further out there so you get a bit of a thinner stroke, a little mark, a little less intense or wide. There we go, that's a bit better. Um, sometimes use Payne's Grey to Give me a darker colour. Mix it with a bit of umber. So in this middle part of the tree will always be darker. Because it doesn't get the light quite so much. I should use a little fine rigger brush in a minute. But let's press on a little bit, get a bit darker still here on these boughs here. Got the little features. A good idea, squint your eye and see where I need darks. I think that needs to be darker here. Make sure it's all grounded as well. Well, you can see I finished my painting um, back in the studio. Um, I I've done a few 
alterations, a few adjustments, uh, some uh, details in the tree, a little, a little bit more foliage there, and also I marked out this line of trees here. They were a little bit faint, and you don't want to bring them too dark because it brings them forward. Uh, but I noticed they were not really reading as as a line of trees in the distance. So I've made a few uh, alterations there, a, a little bit of uh, colour here for the, uh, you know, some of the wildflowers that were here. Just dabbed in a few little colours, some more wildflowers that we had there. Anyway, I hope you uh, enjoyed this. As I said, this is a view from Beth Chateau's garden uh, near Colchester, a uh, very famous garden, and, but this is in the woodland area, looking out across the fields. Um, but if you like it, uh, please give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and you'll be notified of uh, further paintings that I'll do. Uh, there's no charge, of course, for uh, subscribing. It's uh, just a notification, really, to let you know. Thanks for watching.